in the video, How Art Made the World, we saw how the human figure was portrayed by prehistoric humans, the ancient Egyptians, and the ancient Greeks. We learned how the prehistoric humans exaggerated the human figure, the Egyptians stylized the human figure, and the Greeks idealized the human figure, and how their culture was reflected in their artistic portrayal of the human form. Modern art continues to use the human form, and like the Egyptians and Greeks, we continue to use mathematics to understand the form, an understanding that helps us to use purposeful exaggeration to communicate individual, social, and cultural ideas. Renaissance artists, inspired by the art of ancient Greece and Rome, continued to explore the proportions of the human body. The image Vitruvian Man by Leonardo da Vinci is considered by many to be the high point of this exploration. His mathematical ideals laid out in this image are the foundations of the ones we use to this day. In his notes, Leonardo found a palm is four fingers both in width and length and the overall height of a human is 24 palms. Other proportions he noted include the length of the outspread arms is equal to the height of a man. From the hairline to the bottom of the chin is one-tenth the height of a man. From below the chin to the top of the head is one-eighth the height of a man. From above the chest to the top of the head is one-sixth the height of a man. From above the chest to the hairline is one-seventh the height of a man. The maximum width of the shoulders is a quarter of the height of a man. From the breasts to the top of the head is a quarter of the height of a man. The distance from the elbow to the tip of the hand is a quarter of the height of a man. The distance from the elbow to the armpit is one-eighth the height of a man. The length of the hand is one-tenth the height of a man. The foot is one-seventh the height of a man. And from below the foot to below the knee is a quarter of the height of a man. Modern ideas on the proportions of the human body continue to use many of Leonardo's ideas, but it uses the length of the head as the norm. The body is eight heads high, with arms and legs being four head lengths. The width of the head is used for frontal proportions. The width of the body at the shoulders is three heads. The width of the chest and hips is two. Perhaps the place where our construct has the greatest impact on our ability to see accurately is the human head. Think of newborn babies. Their world is full of great big human faces. Babies study faces, even learning them from tactile information, from touching them. The point is it's probably the first and strongest construct that we form as human beings, the human face. The problem with this construct is that when we look at someone, we focus on their face and not the whole head. The hair becomes like negative space. It is there, but generally ignored. In how many of those photos did you see the whole head? Why didn't you notice that? In 
In this series of images, there is enough information for our construct to recognize it as a face. Yet, you likely noticed right away that not only is the whole head not there, the whole face isn't there. Now look at these images. I'm sure you noticed the hair. When the hairstyle is significantly unusual, we take notice and we add a new book into our construct library. You may or may not uh, be needing to focus on the head and face in your final project image, but given that the construct is so strong, we're going to take some time to study the proportions. Within the head, the length of the eye becomes the norm. The head is five eyes wide and seven to eight eyes tall. Notice the eye line is located mid-distance between the top of the head and the chin. The tip of the nose is half that distance. And half again is the mouth line and where the head and neck visually meet. The ears connect to the head at the eye and nose lines. The mouth width is found from the center eye points and the width of the nose is one eye. The hair occupies the top quarter of the head. So how does the construct cause problems? When we draw a head, we tend to draw the whole head, but then we use facial proportions to fill it. We place the eyes two thirds of the way up. The nose is centered and the mouth is centered under that. And other problems come when the neck is added. The, the construct has a tendency to make the neck far too thin, resulting in a drawing of a person that would turn into a bobblehead when they ran. Please, please be aware that all these proportions are an ideal. No one fits all of these perfectly. Not you, not me, not anyone. We are all different and unique. This ideal creates a construct of the human form. A construct that if used carefully can be used to help us see, identify, and record the uniqueness in each of us. For your ideas, uh, it may be important to keep the human form looking real, but suggest an emotion through subtle exaggeration. You might decide the idea or emotion is the critical thing and to highly exaggerate the figure accordingly. Understanding these proportions allow you, as the artist, to control what you are doing and why you are doing it. 